Are you stressing about the SAT and worrying if you're gonna fail and you're gonna not do good and you're not gonna do... Okay. Oh, fuck! Yes. Well, this is the video for you, my dude. Okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is DeAndre, and you're watching Disney Channel. Okay, so a lot of people were asking me, do an advice video. Do an advice video or I'm gonna kill you. Do an advice video or I'm gonna strangle you to death and choke you in your sleep. Well, look, here's that advice video. Oh my God, my kid, please do not fall. Okay, so here's this, here's, what? Uh... Oh, fuck! Oh my God, no! Sorry, my camera fell. What is up, my dudes? So today I am going to actually teach you how to, yeah, I'm going to teach you guys how to get a perfect score on the math section. A lot of you are probably like, DeAndre, we don't trust you anymore. You're a fraud. You're a freaking fraud. Well, let Ooh. You're right. Okay, so I got a 770 on my math section of my SAT, so I think I'm qualified to like do this. Not freaking really, because I am dumb as Ooh. I made an SAT video about like two weeks ago and a lot of people were like, dude, you got a 1600. You're freaking so smart. You got a 1600. Um, it's called inspect element. You, you go to Google Chrome. No, I'm just playing. I'm literally just playing. Um, but yeah, I didn't really get a 1600 on my SAT. If that's what you're asking, I'm not that smart. So what the frick? Like what the frick? Sorry, but I am, well, I guess I'm qualified. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to give you some advice for like how to get a 770 and above on the SAT, even though I got a 770 and that's it. I have stuff written down. You can't see the paper because you know, my life never goes the way I want it to. Basically what I have written down here is take practice test. Every freaking day, my dude. Every freaking day, my dude. Every freaking day, my dude. My biggest regret was taking all the practice tests like in the beginning of my study session. Uh, if you take it at the end, it's better because you know, you're leading up to the test. And then like when you take the test, it's gonna feel like you're taking a practice test, so it's not gonna be as stressful because you already know how the test is gonna go. You know what I mean? Probably not because I cannot speak. Another thing that I totally forgot to mention in this clip was that you need to go over every single practice test and every single math question that you do, especially the ones that you don't know, like the ones that you know you got wrong or you guessed on, or just anything of that sort, of that nature. Honestly, I would just go over every single question just to make sure that you fully understand how to do it and how to approach it a different way. Uh, like being able to approach questions in a di like in multiple different ways is the key to doing well in this test because pacing is everything. When I tell you pacing is everything, pacing is literally everything. You can know all the math in the world, but if you don't know how to pace yourself, you're never even gonna finish the test. So at the end of the video, I'm definitely gonna show you like a way how I took the test so I can pace myself properly and actually get through all the questions without rushing. So that was my TED talk, I guess. What the frick? I've never been that serious ever in any of my videos. What the frick? What the frick? My next piece of advice for you, make sure you get a good calculator. Yay! Oh, fuck! Go. Like I said before, your pacing on this test is key to your survival. It's key to living in this jungle we call the SAT and this Goliath that we call the College Board. But if you conquer the pacing, you're fine. You're Gucci. You're you're, you're so Gucci. Okay, I gotta stop. But basically, being comfortable with your calculator is key. Because if you're not comfortable with it, and if you don't know what's happening on your calculator, it can only waste time and money. Because all you're gonna do is just decrease your score or not even improve at all. So it's best to just be comfortable with everything that you have and just simulate all the conditions possible for the test. So what I mean by that is wear the same clothes that you would wear on this on test day. Maybe even eat the same thing while you're doing your practice tests. Make sure you're in approximately the same environment that you would be in when you're taking the test. But like, okay, you know, like the same clothes things, like don't make that a habit. Like don't wear the same clothes every day like I do. Like it'd be like that sometimes, but 
but sometimes you be a little musty, musty, must. Okay, um, so we're just gonna stop this right here because it's getting a little bit too real, but okay. Adios, my dudes. If you don't bring a calculator, that will dramatically decrease your store. St store. What the fuck? Um, that will dramatically. Ah! It's like dust everywhere. Probably because my hairline is so old. Yeah. Ah! So the next thing that I put down on my pe. I was using this to stick on the window. This time I'm just gonna use my blinds and just like, hopefully it doesn't fall, you know? Yeah, let's do that. Oh. Hi, so I'm on my computer. So this time I'm actually gonna give you some advice. I am so sorry. I was having uh, a stroke and I'm just gonna like take you through the journey of how I studied for my math section and this hopefully will help. Everyone struggles with the pacing. Even I struggle with the pacing and I got a 770. And I feel like this method actually does help. Ew, that's Yahoo, what the fuck? Okay, so basically what you have to do is type in SAT practice test. I'm just giving you an example. And this is how I do all my math sections. Okay, so basically this is just the math section of the SAT. So I'm just gonna scroll all the way down to the math section. One piece of advice for you. Make sure you know this chart. If you don't know this chart, you're screwed. So basically know all these reference charts and you will be Gucci. So this is how I do my no calculator section. So instead of like starting from number one and then working my way down, I start, I start at number 16. Th there's logic behind this, I promise. So basically if you do the ones that are multiple choice first and then you never get to the free response ones, it's kind of hard to like recover because on the free response, you can't guess on them. So it's really, it's really like a strategy of where like, at least you have a chance of getting it right. If you, um, like, you know what I mean? You have a way better chance of guessing on the multiple choice than you do on the free response because there's like literally 9,000 different combinations of like things you can put in there. So it's best to do these first so you don't have to guess on them because then you are screwed. You can't get a perfect score then, you know? This is what I would do. So I would do number 16, do number 17, 18, 19, 20. And if something is hard, just skip it and come back to it. That's what I usually do. And then, then go back to the beginning and then just do it. And if you have any time left over, make sure you utilize that time to do the ones that you didn't do and the ones that you thought were kind of confusing or just do just redo the entire thing and see if you can fix it. You only have 25 minutes, so it's kind of like, what the frick? Give me a freaking chance, my dude. Oh, God, why? Um, so the next, the next section is the math calculator section. So this is how I approach it. You guys have to practice this way, otherwise you're just not gonna do good, you know? So use your practice test and just try the method and see if it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, then it's, there's other ways out there to do it, but you know, this is how I do it. So basically what I do for this section, um, I start at the beginning. So I do one, two, three, what the fuck? It says I only have 10% on my phone. Okay, so we're gonna have to wrap this up. So yeah, I do one, two, three, four, and I keep doing all the questions until I get to, okay, so you see how this question right here, number nine and 10 are grouped together? I do that one, if there's a second one, if there's a second one of these, I skip this one. So basically I would do all this up until the second one, the second like group together questions. And I would skip all the way to the end. And the reasoning behind this is the, basically the same reasoning. And plus all these questions at the end right here are harder. I go all the way to the end of the test and I do all these questions. And if I have any problems, if I don't know how to do something, I skip it and I do all of these. And then I go back to that uh, two question and you should have around 30 minutes left when you do this. If I have like 30 minutes left, I automatically go to, if I haven't already gone to the free response in this section, I go to the free response because that's kind of like a marker where like you need to hurry the fire. Um, oh, another thing that I forgot to say, any book for the math will work. Uh, a lot of people say that, you know, just strictly use SAT material. I feel like anything will help you wrap your head around the concept. You don't really need to use all the SAT material. 
Okay, so I'm so sorry, but hopefully that made sense. I'm going to leave some links in the descriptions of some resources that you can use in order to help you on the SAT. And I'm also going to leave some QASs, which are basically extra practice tests for you guys to use. Thank you.